hello everyone assalamu alaikum so here i will show you how to deploy flutter food delivery app and this deployment is for code level one and two now if you have commercial license that should be another deployment so over here i will show you how to install the downloaded code which is code level one and code level two in your local environment so if you downloaded it it should be like this inside this you will have a database file and you backend file as well as your front end file so you'll have this three but anyway in future the name might change in this case it doesn't really matter but the idea is same all right so first i'm going to go ahead and uh, unzip it all right now this folder we're going to access it from our terminal so i'm going to open up the terminal so i'm in the downloads folder and here i would do cd food delivery app this one all right and then i would do clear and i'm going to come inside all right so i have this one so this is the one that well it's uh this is the one that is this one now this one i'm going to open up in my sublime text now over here we are going to change some of this uh, configurations now since we are going to install it locally over here we are going to work on the password and database name and username so we know that we have a database over here which is this one now how to work with this database now first we need to go ahead and uh, upload this in our database server now in my case as I'm locally doing it so I'm going to use the PHP uh, MySQL workbench but this this should be the same for PHP my admin so here is my MySQL workbench and I'm gonna come at the top and I'm going to create a new database name so food delivery code level one and two so this is the one that i'm going to create now this is simply a database name if you use php my admin just go ahead and create a database name and you are good to go all right so my database is ready over here as you can see i mean database name is ready now this is the time we go ahead and import data to it so I'm going to select it and over here I'm going to import data now I'm going to import from self content file and it will take me or it should take me to the file where I have installed everything now I'm going to look for my folder here we see this SQL file and I'm going to open it and after that I have to select my database name which is actually this one and this should stay same now if you are using PHP my admin first you would create a database table name and then after that you will select it and on the left right side you will see there is an upload option so where you would go ahead click and select your database file like this one and then start uploading and over here we say start import but the idea is same and looks like it has uploaded successfully all right so we are done with this section all right now we're gonna come over here inside this we're gonna set our database so what is our database our database name is food delivery code level one two all right so this is our database name make sure make sure that this is the correct name food delivery code level one and two if you want you can also copy it from here and put it here the idea is same all right now in general the username is root if you're locally that should be root if you're on mac os that should be root but if you're on zemp server it could be root or something else that depends up to you when you set up the database whether it was root or not so go ahead and find the correct name and put it here now over here in my case the password is different so in my case the password is locally 
this is my password now you could you definitely your password is different than mine so go ahead and use that and also if you use XAMPP server might be there is no password so you have to know if there is password or not now I'm going to save this one alright and we should be good about it now I'm going to go ahead and open up our terminal so this is our terminal and I'm going to go ahead and do MBVS so now inside this we have our backend right so backend file now in future if you're watching this video this file could be different but the idea is and go ahead and get into your laravel framework so this is our laravel framework which we are getting into right okay so now over here we do ls so we see we have a lot of files over here so first thing i would do php artisan config clear so it would remove some configuration files if we have imported them from other environment and here we would also cache clear all right and after that here we do artisan serve now with this our deployment server is ready which is this one i'm going to copy this and i'm going to go ahead into this browser now this is the front end now we also need to work on the back end actually in back end we have our data now let's go ahead and try to log in looks like the password doesn't work the password was admin admin but if you install it in an environment in a server then definitely you should change the password and later down the road I will show you where to change the password so your users are here registered users now your food everything is over here and uh, like other systems or settings they are all here okay now in general if it's uh, code level one and two this section is not useful for you actually this is for commercial license where you can set up your key paypal key payment type and currency business name and country like that but anyway so if you are in code, code, code level one and two this is where it is useful now the first thing I would like to tell you showing this image now looks like the image doesn't show up over here so I'm going to go ahead and do this debugging I'm going to find this image and here we do see that it looks like it refers to MVVS this one now since we are locally so this is not going to be useful right because locally the URL is this one now we need to change this one and we can change it actually from here so instead of doing like this, we are going to do like this 127.0.0.1. And now let's go ahead and uh, save it. Now let's refresh it. Okay, and it looks like, yes, uh, we are supposed to see, but we don't see. Now, what could be the reason? Now we'll come to our server. Uh, terminal over here and uh, first I would do a clear then I would do three things I would config the clear the config I'll clear the cache and then I'll run it again so make sure that our changes takes place because just now we made a change over here now we are going to go ahead and restart and looks like it still doesn't work now we could do one thing over here we can also put our port number now if it's on a live server you don't need to put any port number you just put your URL domain and you are good to go now let's go ahead and uh, do like this and looks like it's working with the port number now the port number actually refers to the port the one that we have at the top uh, where we started it right and when we start our server we get to see that so that's the port number like 8000 okay so you get the idea which means that on the back end we are able to access it right of course you can create more food over here and uh, like that and our food category is here you can also change it now we need to work on the front end side this time our job is to connect this front end code with the back end code which is this one right our back end server is up and running so i'm going to go ahead and open this on our 
Android Studio. So now let's go ahead and open it in a new window. Now it's gonna open up soon. All right. And one thing, once again, in future, if you're watching, the names could be different, but how do you know that these are the correct files? So if it is a Flutter, then definitely inside this, you will have iOS and the lib folder, Android folder, right? So that means this is the Flutter front end code. And the Laravel code should be definitely with app, config, database, like that. So even if you see the names are different in future version, uh, but the idea is same. All right, now what else? Let's see, looks like we have an error. Now there could be error reasons because we didn't do pub get. So let's go ahead and do pub get. And at the same time, we should try to run our app and we'll see how it goes. So our simulator is selected and we are waiting for our app to be ready. Looks like our app has booted and after that we are going to go ahead and do this one over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's close it and then we are going to sign in. And uh, looks like we are signed in. All right, now if you go ahead and check it, actually, there is a file which is called constants, this one. Now, this is directly coming from our server side uh, URL, but we installed it locally. So here we want to change the local IP address or local host which is 127.00.1.8000 right now this should be for actually iOS I'm on Android simulator so I'm not going to use this one so for Android simulator this address is a bit different so 10.0.2.2 and your port number now this time it will load the data from our local database or from our local server all right so this is coming totally from our local server now let's go ahead and click over here so this is in local server and uh, we can log out and try to log in over here so one more time one two three four five six one two three four five six and let's go ahead and click on this so it, which means that we are able to work locally so this is the first step of installation locally thank you